Okay, I'm joined by criminal defense attorney Jeffrey Wolf, as well as trial attorney and federal litiga litigator Robin Nunn. Uh, let's break this down. So we see some uh, arguments outside the presence of the jury, which is dealing with the admissibility uh, of certain evidence and testimony. Jeffrey, I want to take this question to you first. Uh, what is the significance of what we are seeing here, and what uh, piece of evidence is the prosecution trying to get in? So what they're trying to get in is the step data from what they're saying is Melly's cell phone to say how far he walked and what he did and where his movements took him so that they can then place him at different spots in this scene. That seems to be what they're headed towards. And what the defense is doing is correct. They're saying this is not scientifically reliable information. The prosecution is saying that an iPhone or an Apple Watch is the same as a pedometer which is just not true. Apple will tell you that's not true. And the articles that the defense is providing showing that there is a 30 to 40 percent deviation is a pretty big deal when we're talking about what they say is 70 steps. That's a pretty big deal in the amount of places that you've traveled and the distance you could be from a potential shooter. Yeah, and Jeffrey, you know, at trial in a case like this, uh, it's important for the defense, and you're a criminal defense attorney, you know this very well, uh, to make a robust record in case there uh, is an appeal, uh, and therefore the appellate court would have a, a good, robust record to make a determination uh, whether reversal is warranted. Now here, with the decision being made by the judge to allow this evidence in, and there was this supplemental uh, argument by the defense to make that robust record. Um, there was an argument as to this not being necessarily a Daubert uh, analysis issue, but more of a foundation issue. And of course, deals, this deals with that cell phone data. Uh, and we've heard that there could have been a, a, a multiple people using this particular cell phone uh, and not just Melly. Uh, can you expand on that for our viewers? What, uh, what was the foundation issue that the defense was pointing to here? Yeah, absolutely. I'd be happy to expand on it. What This is the most frustrating thing with judges. They often tell you, give me cases, give me articles, give me things to support it, and then they don't want to read it. He said it's unfair to give me a one-inch stack of paper and expect me to read it during a trial. And the defense is correct here. This is not a Daubert issue. Daubert is a case that stands for that an expert opinion has to be based in well-accepted scientific fact, basically. And this is not an expert witness that's being asked to testify to this. It is somebody who is saying they are not an expert and they're just going to testify to what the phone says and let the phone speak for itself. Well, when that is occurring, when we are saying, okay, we're going to take this technical information or we're going to take a phone call or an email or any piece of evidence, you have to lay the foundation that it is reliable, that this piece of evidence that is speaking for itself has a degree of reliability. You have to say how you got it, where it comes from, that you're tying it to the correct person, and that it is scientifically reliable in the case of something like an email, or in this case, the cell phone. And so the defense is making a proper objection, and they are absolutely making a robust record. If I had a dollar for every time a judge told me to sit down, that's enough, and I didn't, I wouldn't be on these airways, I can tell you that.